Hello and welcome to Access Chat. Delighted to welcome Aaron Hawley today. Uh, Apologise for any technical issues that we might have. I've been having a bit of a nightmare. Uh, Aaron, we're delighted to have you on. Uh, I know you do work for Easter Seals Thrive and you've been joining us uh, on Access Chat for a while now, but you also do advocacy work elsewhere. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the work that you're doing with Easter Seals Thrive? Sure. Uh, Easter Seals Thrive is for young women with disabilities. And we do Twitter chats and um, Facebook chats. And we have different um, websites geared towards young women. Different, you know, we did a chat about fashion. We did a chat about um, college and school, all different topics. So it's really fun. I enjoy doing it. So that's really, that's it. <laughs> how, how about your personal stuff, Erin? I know you do a lot of advocacy. Sorry, um, Neil, but um, tell us more about that, too. So I run a blog and a Twitter account. It's um, the Gigi Gimp, and I talk about, you know, different nerdy stuff, like comic books and uh, board games, and I mention disability in that you know, in that nerd stuff, okay. accessibility, and I also am a disability advocate, so I do a lot of different work, you know, for people with disabilities. Yeah. I think, actually, the, the first access chat you came on was the one with Ian Hamilton, where we were talking about gaming. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think that was probably the first time we... We cross parts, and um, I have to say that I, I actually I know that you're a big fan of sci-fi. I used to work for a, a company that, um, that that specialised in in sci-fi memorabilia, and so every every month back in the day of VHS, we used to get delivered by lorry a lorry load of Star Trek videos, which I would have to unload and send off to all of the the people. Um, so, so, um, I kind of got sick of Star Trek <laughs> because it was heavy. Um, yeah. But 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 to be fair, um, I'm also a big sci-fi fan. Big, uh, I love sci-fi. Yeah. Um, and, and, I yeah. think Star Trek is my favorite. Yeah, I love Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. It's just that it was heavy, and they they were yeah. exploiting yeah. the fans yeah. every time. They'd repackage the series with a new spine image across the back of the spines, and the fans would buy the whole series all over again because it got a different spine image, and they'd line them up on their bookshelves. <laughs> yeah, smart marketing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I know it's, it's kind of cruel that um, <laughs> it was cruel to me because I was carrying them. But um, but no, it's, in in all seriousness, I think that sci-fi is great because it, it actually gives us an insight into some of the technologies that um, that we use as assistive technologists and, and users of, of accessibility tools as to how we might um, use these things in the future, uh, and it gives an insight into um, the potential of, of technology to change our worlds, like brain-computer interfaces and all this kind of. Mm -hmm. All this kind of stuff. Yeah, Deborah, I know you've got a question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Neil. And I, I agree with you. I, I think the technology and the sci-fi and all that stuff. I, I love all that stuff. I, um, I, I just am a big fan of it. I, I also, um, I also, Erin, wanted to talk a little bit. I wanted to tell you, um, and I might have told you this before, Erin, but Easter Seals is very, very powerful to my family. Whenever, mm -hmm. um, whenever we heard that Sarah had Down syndrome, she was four months old, mm -hmm. and 
you know, they were laying all this really heavy stuff on us, and we were trying to figure out, you know, what do we do? How do we, how do we really help Sarah be successful? And the one organization that really stepped in to help us was Easter Seals. We were in Jacksonville, Florida, and Easter Seals sort of scooped in. They they started working with us. They found a really really good um, school for Sarah, early intervention school that also worked for my son Kevin. And I am just a huge huge fan of what Easter Seals does because um, we just did not eat, we didn't even know where to turn and by the time we were looking around to see wh what next Easter seals was mm -hmm. Easter seals was there so um, I'm very very appreciative of Easter seals because they they really helped us at a time when our family was very confused so one thing I would be interested in knowing is so I love that Easter seals has this thrive program and it's focused on girls and women with disabilities and you've talked about you know some of the the you know programs that you've done there already but how did you get involved with this program and I know one of the topics that we want to focus on is relationships mm -hmm. and online dating and how accessible they are but tell us how how you got involved with this program at Easter Seals. Sure. Um, last year they had a chat about disability and fashion. So I joined the chat and then became Facebook friends with Easter Seals. And then I saw them post a job opening. So I applied to the job and I got the job. And that was really great. So it sounds like a dream job. It is pretty much. My dream job, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's really important for young women, especially, to have that positive influence. So I was really excited to be part of that. And I would also think, Erin, that it, I think it, it would be powerful for young women with disabilities to see a leader um, like you that also has a disability. So it seems like in a lot of ways they could really identify with you maybe even more so than when they usually are, you know, dealing with people without disabilities. Not, not that we all don't, we all have a place to play and we're all valuable, but I would think in a lot of ways you're a very solid um, role model for them. Yeah, I think so. I hope to get it. I try to be. Yeah. yeah. So, um, one thing I'd like to, to point out is that um, I'm aware of Easter Seals and the good work that they do, but uh, it's not an organization that anyone, well, people have heard of outside of the US. So, perhaps you could give some of the, the, the UK and, and, and other guests. A bit of a background or a quick explanation of of the Easter Seals organization because I know it does so much. Mm -hmm. Sure, Easter Seals is an organization that's like a hundred years old. It's very old, you know, it's older, and they do a lot of work, um, you know, for people with disabilities. They help find jobs. They help find housing, um, they have mental, mental illness help and people with autism, you know, finding programs. So there's a lot, they, they do so much and I think people are starting to see all the good work that we do. So. Oh, and I, I didn't even realize, I didn't realize, Neil, that, it, you know, isn't that funny? I, when I think of these Easter Seals, I just thought it was everywhere. I did. Are y'all primarily in the United States, Erin? Yes, it's mostly in the United States. I didn't even other, realize that. We have other countries as well. I think okay. Canada, Canada, Australia, uh, Puerto Rico, I think. Okay. So, yeah. So it's a bit like Baseball World Series, Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, but I know I know the, the, the work's fantastic, and I I first 
uh, came across the Easter Seals through the Joining the Dots videos, all of the sort of stuff that they put out about people using technology and how it helps them and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic resource. So, so um, going back to your subject of, of online dating, are there any particular dating sites that you think are um, m more disability friendly than others? You know, are you regularly swiping right on Tinder, or is it, uh, or are there other sites that are, are much more um, open and, and friendly and accessible? Um, for me, the most accessible was OK Cupid, which is a, a dating website. I mean, I don't really use accessibility features, so it's hard for me to say, you know, what's more or less accessible. But I found I got the most conversations and the most interest on OkCupid. They had a they had a dating site specifically for people with disabilities, but it's not that big. So there's not a lot of people on the website. So it's hard to find somebody there. So so Aaron, they so they have um, a section specifically for people with disabilities. It seems in a way though, I, even though I'm sure I applaud their efforts, but it seems like it should, we should all be included in all of it. I mean, do you think there's, I mean, is it like an interest group so that you can, um, I mean, tell me more about it. I'm probably making assumptions that are not fair. Uh, okay, okay, you did. Um, doesn't have, a, uh, it's for everybody. You don't have to have a disability. But you can search for disability and stuff comes up. But there, there are websites that are just for people with disabilities. Okay, all right, that makes more sense. I've tried those too, but not good. <laughs> And, and, and what was it about the, the others that, that wasn't good? So Because um, there wasn't that many people on the website. So it was hard finding somebody that lived locally, like lived near me. I found people in like Scandinavia, people in England. So it was hard finding somebody local on that website. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But OkCupid okay, has like millions and millions of people on it. So. Yeah, I know that Sarah Rue, um, and most people know that Sarah was born with Down syndrome, but you know, we've actually played around um, with dating sites, you know, Sarah and I sort of, um, Sarah's a really good technologist. She's generally better with technology than I am, but, um, but I found that there were on some of the sites, um, I, I, I would get a little nervous as a mother, you know, it's like I wasn't exactly sure if the people were who they said they were and, um, you know, so it, we, we had mixed results, um, but she actually did meet a couple of people that um, she, you know, that she she was uh, had already known about. So she, um, it was good for friendship purposes. But yeah. uh, it might be harder for, uh, you know, I don't know as much about it. Yeah. Well, I met my boyfriend on Twitter. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So that's good. It was weird. I, I was not, I was not looking for anybody, but I just found him on Twitter, and it was like an instant connection. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. I love, I love Twitter. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, we all love Twitter. We're all, yeah. Big, Big fans fan. of Twitter. <laughs> Big fans of the little bird. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so one of the other topics you were you you expressed interest in talking about was was about health and 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 uh, both I think mental health and also sort of mm-hmm. physical health and looking after yourself. So, um, what kind of a what kind of advice do you give out through East Cecil Thrive on on how to you know become healthy, stay healthy. So we have a lot of a lot of content. Um, right now we're doing uh, something about quitting smoking. So that's really good. And we always had a lot of mental health uh, resources in every state. So that's really good. And uh, you know, we promote exercise. We promote healthy living as much as possible, and uh, it's really great. And so what has the response has been, <clears throat> Aaron? Do you find that young women, um, and I should, should say women and girls with disabilities, are joining these conversations more, or, or do you seem to be getting out to the target market that Easter Sill was trying to approach? I think I am. Um, when I started working for Easter Seals, the Thrive Twitter account had like 250 followers. And now, it, it, a year later, it has over 900. Wow, congratulations. And we're going to get you a bunch more on uh, Access Chat this week. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. so I, think, I think the message is getting out there. Yeah. I think so, too. And it's because you're engaging. That's why it's getting out there. Because I know you're engaging um, from both Easter Seals and your personal account on Access Chat. Mm-hmm. And it is all about engaging with others. Right. I don't. I try and be as personable as I can on Twitter. So it's not just like Easter Seals, but it's an actual person. Right. behind the Twitter. So. Which is very important, and we see sometimes a lot of organizations and corporations, they're not doing that. But people want to know, who is behind that Twitter handle? Who are right. you? What do you, what do you stand for? It's very important for you to, there to be engagement, which is probably mm-hmm. why you're seeing the successes that you're seeing. I hope so. I think so. <laughs> well, yeah. your results speak for themselves, so. Thank you. And I, and I definitely think that that's true. You 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 have to really be personable on on on, mm-hmm. on kind of media. The broadcasting only doesn't really cut it. People want to have conversations, even if they don't know the person behind the account. The account's still got to behave in a way that's approachable and and um, friendly mm-hmm. and responsive and everything else. And and I think that a lot of a lot of people think that they can just put stuff out there and throw it out and not have that kind of two-way conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That is not social. No. Yeah. And, and I know that Deborah and, and Antonio and I, we all put in the the, the hours and, and, and stuff mm-hmm. responding to people because it's really important that you know, right. we, we put out messages. Uh, if people are... Uh, are coming back to us asking questions, then we're duty bound to to actually do something about that, respond, help, s- share the information, and and spread the spread the the, the good word. Yeah. So um, I think it's it, what you're doing is really important. Aaron, uh, I have a question about online dating sites. Um, what do you wish developers that were creating or enhancing these online uh, dating sites, what do you wish that they knew about people with disabilities and what um, the needs were and stuff? Any suggestions for them? Um, I think they should communicate with actually disabled people with disabilities. They should connect with us and ask us how to make it more accessible. Because there's so many resources out there 
um, from people with disabilities. So if they ask us, we can share our concerns and, you know, do test it out, make it blind, accessible, um, all different. You know, there's so many ways to make things accessible. And it's easy, and it's not expensive. You know? Right. 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 And, and everything that they do, we talk about this a lot, everything you do to make those sites more accessible to people with disabilities makes it more accessible for all of us. Right. So it makes your site more almost always more usable for everyone. Right. We talk about that a lot. Yeah. And, and it's not like it's small numbers of people either. And so right. they're wanting to attract people. Um, I use the sense of attraction in both senses of the word. Um, then, then they want to attract the widest audience, and, and so mm -hmm. they need to be thinking about that because uh, you know, a lot of people with disabilities are, are dating people without disabilities, and vice versa. And, and mm -hmm. therefore, we need to be um, included in that in that whole process. Not that I'm using dating sites, happily married man, making that clear on video right now. <laughs> in case his wife is listening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aaron, thank you, thank you, thank you for, um, you know, joining us today. I know we had some technical problems, but we are really excited about having you on Twitter, you know, tomorrow to talk about this topic. I, I think it's a topic that uh, we need to really, really dig into even more yeah. as a society. I think it's a very important topic. Thank so you, we, thank you. Yeah, we appreciate your work with Easter Sills. And as an advocate yourself, I think you're really making a difference for a lot of other people. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Well, see you on Twitter. Yeah. Good. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.